We focus here on a novel area of research called neurotechnology that aims at combining basic neuroscience research with applications from and for technology. As part of that, I set an undergraduate student project where a group of students developed a novel device that allows people with movement disabilities, for example due to paralysis or for example also due to loss of limbs, to control a computer. We found that we can use a computer game console camera, which has actually almost the same performance as these highly professional, very expensive cameras, but has been mass marketed, so bringing down the price to just about 20 pounds. So the idea was, can we have a group of students basically reverse engineer how this computer camera works, use it to do basic computer vision to extract where the eyes are looking, and then use that to control a cursor on a screen. That would have been the basic application. But the students were better than that. They, they, they went ahead and they came up with the idea, well, why not directly control a video game with that? So it's a very simple video game, very similar to the game Pong, most of us remember from our childhood. The students were able to control this with the movements of the eyes quite reliably. And it actually turned out that this is effectively the first video game for people who are unable to move due to loss of limbs or due to paralysis. The technology works actually rather simply. We have two cameras that are mounted close to the eyes outside of the line of vision of the patient and basically record an image of the pupils of the eye. From where the pupils of the eye are in that image, we can then work out where the patient is looking. If we calibrate that on a computer screen, we can basically work out where the patient is looking on the computer screen. So that's like controlling a mouse with where you're looking. Then it's just a fairly simple step to use that signal from this eye-controlled mouse to control a video game. We come up with a student project and that yielded a very good prototype of how this technology could evolve in the future. Provided adequate funding, I think somebody could come up with a working commercial prototype within three years.